So in hello point one, all the action is in the shaders. We're going to define what what position we're going to draw in this vertex shader. We're going to define what color we're going to draw in this fragment shader. So let's go ahead and just try that now. So this geo fragment color is being set to um, a built-in type, which is VEC4. So we haven't talked much about GLSL. GLSL is the language we're going to write these shaders. JavaScript is the language we're going to write these things. So this VEC4 is a built-in type in GLSL, but not in JavaScript. So red, green, blue, alpha. So here we have red. So if we turn this to red and green and just save this, so what color is red and green? Okay, we'll see later when we get to a lecture on color, but red and green together is yellow. So if we reload this web page, we should now have a yellow dot over here. So if we wanted it to be a blue dot, This is red, green, blue. We can go set these to zero, set the blue section to one, save this thing, reload this page, and now we should have a blue dot. Okay, so we can just keep changing this color to, to whatever we want. So this piece of code is setting the color. Now, if you're wondering how it is that I'm saving the code and seeing it changing in a web page that's running from over here, you need to go watch the video about overrides in order to get this set up correctly uh, in Chrome every browser is gonna behave slightly differently. Of course, you can keep your code in your local text editor and then just run it to the web page also, but sometimes it's useful to be able to edit. I'm, I'm running directly off of their website and I'm editing. Okay, so we've seen something about the fragment shader now and we can change this, but it's a little bit clumsy if we wanna make a bunch of changes. The book has this notation. They're defining a string, the F shader source string, which is gonna get compiled down here later in this init shaders function is gonna compile this string. But they've defined this string with all these slash ins and pluses and various other things. And this is a little bit hard to read. So I'm gonna change around this a little bit that in a way that I think is simpler to read. So we're going to get rid of this slash in and this plus, this starting string, this starting string, slash in these right here and we're going to change this right here to a backwards quote and I believe that this should work okay now let me add I put this one up one line so we have a little bit easier time to read this thing so we're trying to add two because we're trying to put a string source here okay now we have a string and now we don't have all of these slash in pluses that we had in our code and it's going to be easier to read and to edit what's going on. So let's just make sure I haven't screwed anything up. Let's reload this page. We still have our page. So does this really matter? The book has their notation this way. Uh, for your first couple of assignments in this class, I think your notation this way is going to be just fine. Eventually, you're going to be writing longer pieces of code here. And all of these extra things in here make it really easy to accidentally have a bug. And so I think you're going to like this style better. So the next thing that we can look at is we can look at what's going up here in this vertex shader. In the vertex shader, we're setting geo position. So in geo position, we're saying we want to draw a dot at 0, 0, 0. Well, let's try to draw it someplace else. So I'm going to draw it. I'm going to move my X position that I'm going to draw over to 0.5 and redraw. Oh, look at that. The dot moved over. And I can move it up Y, 0.5, and redraw. And, we're, and our dot has moved. This is 